Good evening, everyone. It's Thursday night, and so I'm live here. My name's Brandy. I'm Brushed by Brandy. Um, please go check out my Facebook page um, if you're not already. Hang on, I got a piece of hair in my mouth. Um, sorry about that. I gave my kids haircuts tonight, and so I'm covered in hair. Yes, I cut hair. I paint furniture. Um, I'll do your finances for you. Just let me know. One stop shop right here. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my husband. We're running a lot of businesses. Multitasking. Um, so, you guys, I'm here tonight. I'm going to paint with you guys, and we're going to be working on this vanity. So, what this is, is we've been doing this piece start to finish. So, I started this actually two weeks ago, and last week our video just didn't go very well. So, I'm going to redo everything I did on that video. We're going to pretend it doesn't even exist at this point. So, um, I'm going to redo all of that and show you where we are right now. Um, so what we've done on camera so far is we took this piece and prepped it and the prep work that this one required was um, a good cleaning, a very thorough cleaning. And this, and this was a, um, a bleeder. It's made of mahogany. And so it's got two coats of Dixie Belle Boss on it. And Dixie Belle Boss is a stain and an odor blocking primer. Um, and so last week when we started, this is what our piece looked like. And this is what I'm going to start with tonight here is this side too. Um, so this has two coats of Dixie Belle Boss on it. And Boss, um, this is clear Boss, and it dries in a really super matte finish. I actually really like that the paint sticks really nicely to the, to the Boss. So even if you're not 100% sure if you need it, um, putting it on there is going to make your, your first coat of paint go extremely smoothly. So um, the colors that I used on this piece that I've got on the front here, I've got Dixie Belle Gravel Road down at the bottom. Um, and that fades into manatee gray, which is our light gray. This is Dixie Bell T Rose here in the center, and then some drop cloth here. So, we've got so sorry, I, there's just a bunch of people talking about quality issues, yeah. and that they're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So I tested this out last night, and I'm still learning the caveats of it. But we got this little device right here, which is called a jetpack, um, and spent a small fortune on you guys. So you better love us right now. Um, so, so far it seemed to be working. I tried it on my live yesterday on the Redesign with Prima page and um, the only thing I noticed with it is that it will turn itself off at some point throughout the day and I didn't know that and so when I got on I didn't realize it wasn't connected. So I'm learning, but um, it works great. It seems like it works great when it, when it stays on all the time. So um, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. And um, okay, so we're working with four colors here on this piece um, and you guys, there are new Facebook rules that say there are certain words that we can't share or we can't say on um, on camera or they will limit our exposure, but they didn't say that I couldn't make this beautiful sign here that I made. Um, since I am sharing on a crafting page, I crafted this sign right here and I just want to show you guys my handiwork. So point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, point taken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll it with the punches. <laughs> So tonight I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay a base coat on this side so you guys will get to see that first coat all over again. And then I'm going to come around to the front here and we're going to paint the front. So this piece is a vanity. It also has a mirror that's going to go with it. And um, I'm going to show you guys some tips about painting mirrors tonight too. So let's get started with this over here. I got to say all these videos, I don't usually get excited, but I'm excited with everybody talking about how clear this yeah. is. Well, I told you guys that. I either, guess I'll watch you paint, too. It would either be a good or a bad thing. I know my, my husband should be an expert on painting because if you think about it, he's watched more instructional videos now than half of us have. Um, I just fall asleep you, at the wheel. You guys, my husband, Sean, is here tonight to read and answer or ask me any questions that you guys have. So if you have questions along the way, please uh, feel free to shoot those out. If you um, enjoy this video, please let your friends know um, with, with a name down in the comments or... I'm putting it out on your pages. And, um, so what I'm going to do first, I've got my two coats of boss on here. It's got a little bit of texture to it, so I'm just going to take a super fine sanding sponge. Um, this was at one point a 120 grit, but it's so worn down. I would say a 220 um, is more than fine. I'm just going to do a single pass like that. I don't even like to call it sanding because I'm not even really sanding. I'm just taking down any texture in this paint. And I should have a rag here with me, but I don't. Oh, um, you know what else I have up here that actually works really great for this is if you don't have a fine sanding sponge, 
Um, Dixie Belle also sells these are their finishing pads. And I don't know why I hadn't used these before, but I love these. I love these for everything from putting on a transfer, um, but they're also great for just taking down that little bit of roughness without going through your coat of boss. Cause I don't want to go through that. It's protecting, it's, it's encapsulating in all those wood tannins that might bleed through into my paint. And I don't want to break through that barrier. So can we slow down on the big words? Please. Sorry, encapsulating is today's word of the day. <laughs> it was on um, our word of the day calendar. Oh, I didn't see it written down on the uh, <laughs> that little board there. It threw me off. Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. Which little board was that? Wait, wait, this one? wait. Wait this for one it. right here? Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you knew uh, what board you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, really quick, let's go over a few things. Okay. What is the item you're sitting on? <laughs> I just covered that at the beginning of every video. Might as well. Okay, so this is a mechanic okay, stool. Guys. Um, my husband's sitting on the full one, but a mechanic stool picture of post here. Um, it broke, so the post was removed. This one is from Lowe's, so it has a post that just screws into it, so you're able to remove it. So when it broke, I took the post out and just put put the seat on the base, and I used this for painting. So your husband got lazy and just didn't replace it. Yeah. Okay. I told him, hey, my okay. stool's broken, and he yeah, was yeah. like, deal with it go pound sand so this is what i'm dealing with now oh hang on oh, oh my god oh yeah oh. Oh, oh let me cater i gotta oh, keep you I busy yep and the dollies on the furniture <laughs> um these are three wheel furniture dollies so i have these in my amazon shop um they're about 25 dollars for a set of four i'll post a link here when i'm done um from what i hear you can also get them at harbor freight but they're really nice Unless, if you guys notice when they're rolling, if you have any crevices or cracks on your surface, your piece will fall off. They'll stick into it. So they work great for me because my um, flooring is nice and smooth. But if you have a garage or anything with um, stress cracks in it, your piece will want to fall off. I hated them until we moved to this house. Okay. All right, now let's get back to the important so, stuff. So, yeah, that's, um, those are kind of, those are, I, we get those questions like every single week. So I'm live here on the Dixie Bell page every Thursday evening, um, same time, which is, I'm in California, so this is 6 o'clock for me, um, 9 o'clock Eastern. And for the last couple months, we've been working on pieces start to finish, where I show you guys how to take that piece and assess what it needs for preparation, and then... Um, how to go through and make entire looks using the Dixie Belle paint line and then complementing it with some um, redesign with Prima products. So what I'm using right now is I have my Dixie Belle mini brush and I love these brushes for laying on paint. So I'm laying on a base coat on top of this boss. The first color I'm starting with is my darkest color, which is Gravel Road. Now I'm gonna say something right now. Um, it's getting warmer in California. Um, my paint is starting to dry really fast. I've noticed that over the last few days of painting that, um, you know, the dry times change as your weather changes. There's less humidity in the air and, and my paint's drying really fast. So I'm going to add some water to this. See that? I have a no. fan on, so oh. I just sprayed the water and it totally just blew back at me. None of it landed on my feet. It's like a bad 80s movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, Actually, weren't they all bad? So because I'm blending this paint, I don't want it to start setting up prematurely. So I'm going to try to keep it wet through this process. But I can tell you already between my fan and the weather here right now, the paint's going to start drying really fast. And you're going to see me probably use more water than usual. Like already I can tell it's starting to dry. Well, you better work faster. <laughs> see, see how sympathetic my husband is with my broken stool? and. Are your hands okay? <laughs> Good. Wow. <laughs> We're running a sweatshop over That's here. That's right, literally. The kids are yeah. going to work next. Making t-shirts. Okay, so next I'm going to dip into my Dixie Belle Manatee Gray, and that's going to be the gray that I fade into coming close to the top. I just got a little bit of paint here on my top. But I'll tell you, this is a wood stain top that I did, and um, I've got some coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide on there. So where I just got this paint right here, I know I can come back later and wipe that off because my wood is already nice and sealed and it's protected from staining. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now if I get paint onto the top. That is why usually if I'm doing a stain and paint combo, I will do my stain top first. I might have to have you turn that fan off. It's totally dry. What? Paint. I'll just point it in my direction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working really hard yeah. here. You can't turn it. I'm good. It's 
Well, and I'll turn in my direction. Okay. Next, I'm going to dip. Right now, I'm just laying my paint on. I'm getting a basic layoff. Now that the fan's off, I'm going to put some water on this again, and hopefully this time it will stay. It's just blowing off every time. Um, so I'm just basically laying out my colors where I want them on my piece. I have not started blending them into each other yet. So I did a little bit of tea rose right here in the center. This is just my first coat. So if I don't get perfect coverage, I'm going to come back and repeat this exact process with a second coat. So right now I just want to lay my colors out. And then I'm going to come in and fill in that last spot with a little bit of drop cloth. So I know it's off topic, but that's how I roll. Um, the piece behind you? Oh, yeah. You guys go to my page at Brushed by Brandy. I posted those today. Um, with all the details on the colors on those too. Aren't they pretty? I'll let you see them because I've already posted them. Oh, well, thank you. Aren't they pretty? So this is like every Dixie Belle blue, pretty much. I'm kidding. It's not really, but it's Dixie, it's a, a whole bunch of blues, which I have listed on the posting on my page. And then they fade into Dixie Belle drop cloth. And they came out just beautiful. They've got this kind of mottled, stormy effect. Someone told me they look like clouds in the sky because it's not a super smooth blend. So we're doing a smooth blend tonight. But those I did... Um, using a sea sponge and a brush instead of just, I'm just using brushes tonight. So it's just a different way of blending and layering the paint. Now let's talk colors. Yes. What colors are you using again? Okay, so now that I've got them kind of all on here, I've got Gravel Road, Manatee Gray, here, hold on, slow down. Tea Rose, and Drop Cloth are my four colors I'm using on this piece. So now I've got them kind of laid out. It looks terrible, right? And now I'm gonna kind of start working them into each other. I have a brush for each color. So I'm starting here working the tea rose into the drop cloth. And what brush? I just picked up my brush that had the tea rose on it. Um, either one would have been fine. It's really, um, with a base coat, base coat is a little less stressful because with this coat, I'm just trying to get my colors laid on, um, get them roughly blended, but I'm not trying to get them perfect. Now, just to step back a little bit in time, when you're spraying the water on there, does it reactivate the boss at all? No, it doesn't. That's a great question, though. No, my boss is nice and dry. It's been setting up. So on this piece, it's actually been on for two weeks because we did this. We put the boss on two weeks ago on video. So that boss is nice and dry. But if I was letting the water sit and puddle or pool on there and just sit, it could, you know, it could saturate through it, but it's not even sitting for long enough. So now I'm taking my Dixie Belle Oval Medium, and I like the Oval Medium because it's a nice full brush, but really soft bristles. And I just take and I'm working these colors together. This was a clean, dry brush. My paint is wet, so I can it's still workable. And I can take it and just kind of erase those transition lines. This is between the Gravel Road and the Tea Rose. And there's a pretty big color difference between Gravel Road and Tea Rose. They're not probably the easiest colors to blend. But you can see what that soft dry brush does. It just moves those colors together. So now I'm using a rag up here and I'm just drying my brush off. I want to try to keep this brush clean and dry. Um, I'm actually going to take my brush with the manatee gray and I'm going to work. I need to kind of reactivate the paint. Once it starts setting up, if you take a, a moist brush and go back over it again. Did I just say moist? Mm -hmm. Okay, just checking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you take a damp brush, you can just go over that paint and kind of reactivate it again. And now I can come back with my with my dry clean brush and I'm just gonna work these colors into each other. So this is my base coat, you guys. This is where I just wanna get my rough layout, make sure I kind of like what's going on here. Um, but I'm gonna perfect the blending on my second coat. I'm just feathering these into each other, but as we go over to the front and I start on the second coat of this, is where I'll really perfect it. Now, how many coats of boss did you put on the piece? Two coats on this one, and that's because if you go back and watch the video where I cleaned it, it is 100% a bleeder. Um, it kept, when I was cleaning it, it kept wiping dirty. If your piece keeps wiping dirty and you're cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it, and your rag is still dirty every time, it's not dirt on your piece. Your, your piece is bleeding. The moisture will activate those tannins in your wood and it will start bleeding. Um, so this was 100% a bleeder and so I did two coats because it wasn't just preventative. 
it was it was definitely necessary. Okay. Oh yeah, drink time. And what's in there? Just to be clear. <laughs> no comment. Just kidding. It's water with lemon. That's all I drink. Yes, I have to have a lemon in my water. I don't know why that started, but I love lemon water. I take lemons and squeeze them, juice them, and then um, I freeze them into ice cubes. And then every time I fill my water cup, I just fill it with water and take an ice cube and just drop it in there. It's so good. Okay, so you saw I just wiped this down using the, um, uh, the, the finishing pad again, this is a great alternative to a very fine sanding sponge. It is the perfect texture for just wiping down your piece um, to give it that finished feel. So we're gonna put a second coat on here and I'm gonna basically repeat everything you just saw me do on the side. So I'm starting with my gravel road again and I'm gonna come in here. This is an easy part because I'm just putting a straight gravel road onto the legs. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting the inside of my piece. Um, I am painting with the drawers in because I'm blending, and so I want to get a nice smooth blend over the front of my drawers. But then um, once I'm done, I will pull these drawers out and I will touch up around the frame to make sure that my frame um, matches. Like right here, I haven't done that yet, and I can see I can see the wood peeking through. And you never want that to happen. So I will take this drawer out and I will put the coordinating color along the um, frame of my piece. So Catherine, let's find out. Sanding sponges. Yes. Are they washable? Um, yeah, they are. They are. You know, I haven't put these through my um, laundry, my washing machine, but, but I've washed them out with soap and water and they wash fine. So my next thought is I want to try putting one through the laundry with my rags and see, but I, I don't see why it wouldn't hold up. It's like a, um, it's almost like a fine SOS pad is what I would compare it to. So I don't see why you couldn't even throw it in your laundry with the rags. Hey baby, you okay? I feel like there is fruit in my stomach. It's super sore. Come, come here. Come here. And it's purple. Did you pinch yourself? No, we don't want to be Yeah, come sit down. An ice pack would be good if you want to go through one of the ice packs. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys, that's my little one. Just has a has an injury. Hurt his thumb. Okay, so I um, accidentally picked up my clean dry brush and I'm actually using it to lay paint on right <laughs> now. See. Yeah, that was just a mistake, but um so I'm using the oval medium and laying this on. This is the manatee gray. And I'm just going where I can see that I have manatee gray on here before. And then I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna work it right into that gravel road down at the bottom. And I'm not trying to keep my brush clean or my color pure or anything, because I want those colors to transition into each other. So manatee gray and gravel road are similar shades. So you can see blending them into each other. That's a really nice transition. The further apart that your colors are, the harder they're going to be to blend into each other. So now I'm going to come in here. I can see I've got T rows in this area, so I'm going to keep that T rows. Um, I'm putting on my second coat and it doesn't require a whole lot of paint. So I've already got pretty good coverage with my first coat. So now I'm, I, I did a horizontal brush stroke and now I'm coming back with a, uh, I'm sorry, I did a vertical, I'm coming back with a horizontal and that kind of pulls the paint out to the edges on either side. And then when I come in here with my brush that has the gravel road on it, I'm not adding any paint. I'm sorry, not gravel road, the manatee gray. I'm not adding any paint, but I'm just working those colors into each other. Because I just had added the, the manatee gray um, this is where I, and I had feathered that pink out, so now I can just kind of work them softly into each other. I'm going to try to keep this brush clean and dry. I'm going to wipe it off on this rag. Sometimes I use my apron too. So I don't like this here. It's a little abrupt, so I'm going to pull them into each other. I'm going to pull that manatee gray into the center and then feather that back out. Same thing up here. Pull it into the center and feather it back out. Very soft hand I'm using right here just enough to feather that paint ever so lightly. So I really, I think this is pretty now. 
I'm gonna kind of soften these sides a little bit, going horizontally, and then I can correct those with a, I, I mean, this is, my brush stroke is so soft right now, I have no pressure on my brush. I'm just letting the tips of the brush do the work for me. So now I'm gonna come up here and I can see that I've got manatee gray and then drop cloth, a lit, just a little bit of drop cloth right here. So I'm gonna repeat those colors. Add some water here. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all. Brushes. What brushes yes. are you using? So I love the Dixie Bell brushes, and you guys will see today. So I, I lay paint on with the Dixie Bell Mini. It's the most universal, it's super user friendly. You can't go wrong with this brush. If you don't have any of the Dixie Bell brushes, this is a great one to start with. And then the one that I like for blending the paint out is the Oval Medium. So these two brushes are my go to. Now I'm also going to work on the mirror for this a little bit tonight and for that because it's going to be a smaller area I've just got out the flat small so it depends on what type of painting you're doing like I said I like the mini for laying paint on I like the oval medium for blending it out some people like laying paint on with an oval and then I like these for working in small areas so I like to roll my paint on <laughs> yeah. my husband does not enjoy painting you guys I don't think many people do. The last thing we painted though was our house. So I'm just going right back where I see that I already have the manatee gray and I'm just giving that a second coat. Carry that down onto the legs where I already had put a coat on and then get a little bit of the drop cloth. This is just a really, the drop cloth I'm barely using on this piece. It's just a really small amount. So then I'm gonna take my brush that I just put the drop cloth on. It was already pretty clean and dry. I don't want a lot of paint. I'm just using the moisture from the water that I've spritzed on. And I'm just gonna work those colors into each other. So now going back to brushes for a second. Yeah. How many do you keep on hand? 500, like literally I have a thousand brushes. I, I really do um, because I do so many pieces. Um, but I would say if you have, you know, a good invest in a good probably what if I had two ovals and two minis, I could do a lot with that. I could do a lot with that. I have no shortage of brushes. Um, hey, you sell a piece, grab a brush, sell a piece, grab a brush. But so, I mean, although here I'm using I'm using multiple colors, so I've got three minis out and two ovals. So if you're using multiple colors, you may want to have more brushes on hand if you do a lot of multicolor pieces, which I do, I do. So, and then I've got to account for, once I'm done with these, I'll need to rinse them out and then they need to dry because I don't How want do you to, wash them? I wash my brushes in just water. I will run them under tap water until they run smooth and then I use a brush comb and I'll brush them out. And then I set them in a bottle rack, a baby bottle drying rack. I set them in a baby bottle drying rack to dry. Um, really simple. I prefer not to use um, soap. If I've left a brush out and it's hardened with paint, you can use uh, you can soak the tips in Dixie Bell White Lightning, and that will loosen up that crusty paint. Um, here, let me move my sign really quick. It's in my way. <laughs> Subtle, huh? So you can see, I, I love this side right here. I think it's beautiful. So I'm going to move on, and we'll do this center drawer here. And then I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to paint the mirror that goes along. So let me move my seat. I'm going to roll to the other side. Okay, same thing. I'm going to take my finishing sponge and just brush over that. I mean, not even a sanding. And I can feel the difference in my paint. It just takes down like any of those little dust particles that have settled in. Are we still good on quality too? Are we good? I don't hear any complaints. Okay. That makes me so excited. Last week was really tough. I was really, really down when we got off last week. So much time goes into making these videos and preparing the content. And um, see, I'm getting paint up here. I'm not even worried about it because I know I have um, gator hide on this top already that that will just wipe off with some water. I don't want to leave it to set up too long. Um, when I get off here, I'll wipe it off. I'm making sure that I'm getting under this lip right here that I don't have any areas of wood exposed. And then that, and then um, this has just the manatee gray and gravel road is all I have. 
Manatee gray and drop cloth is all I have in the center here. Oh. So Cindy wants to know if it's if they're able to be as uh, awesome as you are. Uh, who? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, if you want to be awesome like me. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. Cindy Meyer Belt. No, I don't, I don't know. know. Um, no, but you guys, um, something exciting that's coming up. Actually, my airfare was just booked today. Um, Dixie Bell has partnered with Redesign with Prima. Um, and Prima is who makes all the transfers that we use. Um, do you see how th that's beautiful? I just laid the drop cloth on, the manatee gray around it. And then with my clean dry brush, I just feathered those into each other. You cannot see a transition on that. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of gravel road and just darken up these sides just for some extra drama. I'm all about drama. Just kidding, I'm not. That's just for a little bit of subtle shading in the corners. And I'll just feather that out. The paint's still nice and wet. It's not drying quite as fast right now. Um, so what I was saying is uh, Dixie Bell has partnered with Prima and they're offering the um, Redesign with Dixie Bell Conference. It's coming up the last weekend in September. It's gonna be held in Ontario, California. Um, and there is a Facebook page called Redesign with Dixie Bell. Um, and that will give you all the information on the conference. If you're thinking about attending, it's gonna be a very hands-on conference. So there's six teachers and you're gonna take um, three classes a day, two hour long classes. They're going to be very hands on where everybody will get to use and um, touch the products and see how they work themselves. So you guys actually get to, to be out there and experience all the products that both companies offer um, and how to combine the Dixie Belle and the Prima products to really create complete furniture looks. So we're going to do small projects together, but you'll be able to take those techniques home and translate them into a larger scale and how to put them on furniture. So I'm going to run over here. I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm going to grab the mirror for this piece. <laughs> Emily says watching you paint puts her in such a creative mood. Does it? Me too. I'm going to go dig after this. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys, we're getting ready to put our driveway in. Okay, I'm going to lean it up against the corner here. I don't want to lean it against my wet paint, but I do want to show you guys some techniques for painting on a mirror. Excuse me while I walk in front of the camera. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys a couple things and then I will talk to you guys about how I paint on a mirror. So this, um, this mirror here, I already cleaned it and it's got two coats of, of boss on it, just like our piece does. So it's got this nice matte finish on it. Um, I talked about this when we first started this piece. This, this isn't a matching mirror. That's um, for that vanity. It didn't have a matching mirror, but this was a pretty swivel mirror. Um, and once they're painted to match, you won't be able to tell that these aren't a natural set. I've got a little bit of dust in here. Let me grab a red. I can wipe this off. I'm just going to dust it. It's been sitting for a minute, so I've got some dust on it. Um, so yeah, so I'm kind of excited because I will be teaching at the, um, the Dixie Bell Conference in partnership with Prima uh, this coming September. And I taught at a conference in February that was open to the Dixie Bell retailers. Um, this one is open to the public. So anyone can go. We do have a lot of retailers that are going to be going. Um, so right now I'm laying paint on. This is the Manatee Gray, and I'm laying it on with my Dixie Bell Mini. As we get into some of these smaller areas, I will switch over to a smaller brush. This has a like fluted detail down here on the bottom. And so I'm just making sure that I'm getting into all those crevices with my brush. Okay, so I've read a lot of things when you come in and paint a mirror as you get close to the glass. And a couple of them are, you can take paper, like these are three by five cards and you can slide them in between, that was two of them. You can slide them in between your mirror and your wood like this. You could use, you know, your junk mail coupons or whatever, but you can slide them in between your wood 
And then I'm going to take my smaller brush because I'm painting a really small area right here. And I can paint right up onto that paper and know that it's not going to get onto my glass. So that is one option for painting on a mirror. See, and then I know I'll pull one of these out. Let me make sure I get all the way over here. I'll pull this middle one out here. I've got no paint up onto my glass. It does have boss on there that I already got on, but um, aside from that, I don't have any paint on it. So another option is you can paint straight on to your glass. This is what I usually do. I will come through and I will paint straight onto my glass. And that way I know I've got a nice clean edge where I've gotten my paint into all the crevices of that mirror. What color are you using? This is Dixieville Manatee Gray. Oh, I've said manatee this whole time. I've said manatee. You guys, this is Mason Dixon Gray. I've said manatee this entire time. Forget that. Do not listen. Manatee Gray never came onto this piece. This Great, I just ordered 55 gallons of that. <laughs> yes. Thanks a lot. I'm so sorry. This is Mason Dixon Gray. I'm so sorry. I've been saying that over and over again. Scratch that completely. So I, I just sorry. need to set the camera down. I'm disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one gallon. This of, is ridiculous. One gallon of Dixon <laughs> has a huge amount of paint, you guys. I paint out of the 16 ounce containers and I do a lot of pieces and I can get two or three pieces out of a 16 ounce container. So I don't know what you're planning on painting. When I'm a doing, lot. When I'm doing spindles like this, I will take my brush and I will hit it back and forth like this. And that gives me a nice smooth paint finish. And then as I go around, I'll just move around the spindle like this. Gives me a nice smooth, whereas if you go, try to go like this, you're going to get paint that gums up in your crevices. But if I go around the spindle, it just goes on ever so slightly easier. You can just hit it back and forth. It doesn't take a lot of paint to get some coverage on this Mason Dixon Gray. Disgusted. Oh, got a little hair right there. I'm sorry. Somebody should have called me out and been like, that doesn't look like manatee. That's Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon Gray has a like slightly purpley undertone. If you put it next to some colors like T Rose, it can even look like a lavender, which is kind of the reason I liked it for this vanity because I always see vanities being kind of feminine pieces. Um, and so that like little lavendery undertone in the um, in the gray looks really pretty. So once this paint dries, and I want to go back. I will take a razor blade. This is a this is just a razor blade scraper, and I will take my and go around my entire mirror just like this. Oh sweetness! This is what I do. This is really I mean every single time I paint a mirror. So this is the boss I'm scraping on right now, and I will clean out this edge right here. So if you paint onto the glass, then this is what you have to plan on doing once your paint dries. My paint was not dry, so I've got some, some of that got down on here, so I'm just gonna brush it off. Okay, and then another option I wanted to show you is another product that I just got. Can you grab that little white container that's on the corner over there? Are we gonna misname this one? No? We're gonna what? Misname this one? There you go. <laughs> no, this is, um. I just heard about this stuff and I thought I would try it. This is actually my first time even opening the container. So it's called Peel Tech. And the reason I wanted to try it is because this might be a good answer for painting onto um, hinges as well. But supposedly you can put it on your surface. So we're going to try it together. You can put it on your surface and then once it dries, you can peel it off. So it's this green that I painted on here. It, you know, I, I would use a chip brush to put this on because it does, um, gum up in your paintbrush okay so you can paint on and you can see i've got this green stripe right here that's the peel tech and then we're going to see if it really works so I, I would wait for my paint to be dry before peeling it i'm just going to use my razor blade to get it started huh. so a thicker application would probably be better with this oh Oh, that's kind of cool. 
You guys see that? It literally just peels off like a like a rubber. Huh. So that was my first time using that stuff. Um, I just read about it on someone's page and thought I would try it. So now I have the boss underneath there too. So I'm scraping that off with my razor blade. And then up here, I've got some of the peel tech left. Huh. It peels off pretty cleanly. Thicker would be better because then it's easier to peel. It peeled off pretty <coughs> cleanly. That's a cool product. Hmm. So where'd you get that? That's, so that's pretty neat. Peel tech. I just got it off Amazon. Removable liquid mask for porous and non-porous surfaces. So for this, I would say either the cards or painting onto the glass probably work better. Um, the peel tech I didn't get quite as even as, as clean of an edge. I've got some I need to cut in right here and get closer to that mirror. Didn't get as close to the mirror as I would like. Um, but I, I think this might be a, a cool option for painting around hinges. Put it on really thick and then you can peel it off. So that was just something I wanted to try. So I'm going to continue my method of painting right onto the glass. It's worked for me this long. It's not broke. Don't fix it. Right. So, um, so yeah. So, um, as far as this vanity goes, our next step on it will be, we're going to add our clear, or, I'm sorry. No, we're, we're doing a transfer on the vanity. So next week when we come back with the same piece, we're going to be putting a transfer on it. Um, we'll do our hardware and we'll do our clear coat and seal it. And, um, and then we can do a little bit of aging and stuff and it'll be close to being ready. So, um, so that's kind of it for tonight, you guys. Um, like I said, if you're interested and want to look into the conference, look up redesign with Dixie Bell conference on Facebook and a group will pop up that has all the information in there. Um, and then follow my page at brush by Brandy and come back next week and we'll keep working on the same piece until we're finished with it. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight. I'm so glad the video worked well. That makes me ecstatic because it has been so stressful. Um, but thank you guys so much and I'll talk to you guys next week, next Thursday, same time.